Good evening. Good evening. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Donna Brady. I'm a councilwoman in the city of Cleveland, representing the West Side. Um, and I've been um, involved with the Albanian community pretty much since I came in 1992, after the fall of communism in Albania. And uh, we started an organization, and from there, we, um, uh, we helped in the Kosovo refugee effort um, during that unfortunate war. And um, that's my cell phone, can you believe it? <laughs> and um, um, so as a Cleveland City Councilman, I, I do get some, I am privy to some news, you know. And in the cultural gardens, there were uh, no gardens left. They were all taken. But I happened to be sitting in the Committee of Community Development when we um, established 10 new gardens. And so I immediately grabbed one for the Albanian community. And we put together our committee, and we went and talked to everyone, and um, it was immediately established that Mother Teresa was going to be our featured focal um, person in this garden. And um, so I thank you all for being here tonight because it's very, very important. And I'd like to just read a little bit. Um, I know that you're all very familiar with Mother Teresa, but there were a few things that came to light as I've been reading to, about her that really explains our relationship between Albania and India uh, with the help of Mother Teresa. Um, Mother Teresa was born in Gonja, which means rosebud. Her mother's name um, meant um, rose. Gonja Agnes Bayaju, in 1910 in the city of Skopje, a traditional homeland of many ethnic Albanians, which was then in the southernmost region of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Agnes, as she was called, was 12 years old, as you heard her say, when she heard a pair of Jesuit missionaries from India preach about their beautiful experience that they had with the people, and especially the children in India. It was then that she felt her first impulse to work with the poor. The picture that came to her was specifically of India. Later, through a church group, she learned of a three-century-year-old order of nuns, the Sisters of Laredo, based in Ireland, and where, where they sent nuns to learn to teach and to speak English. And she realized at that time that it was her vocation in life to work with the poor. So to accomplish this, she did go to Ireland. And just before her 18th birthday, she left, and then she went out to India, where she worked with the poorest of the poor, and the sickest of the sick, and the dying. And you know, I'm sure most of you know all about that. This is a tie between India and Albania's daughter, Mother Teresa. Tonight we've come together to experience an intercultural celebration of the life and work of Mother Teresa. We are very grateful to all of our friends in the Federation of India Community Associations, FICA for short, Richard Herman, where's Richard? Richard, thank you so much. Um, and all of our friends in the International Committee that hosted this event this evening, we thank you so very, very much. And the need, of course, this evening is to raise the needed funds for um, the bronzing, uh, which is the last phase for the statue of Mother Teresa to be erected. The plan date is to um, dedicate her on August 25th, which is her birthday which is in dispute by a couple of days, but we're going to take the 25th. <laughs> because the 26th is one world day, and we know that that's going to be a very crowded day, so we're going to be there on the 25th. I would like at this time to recognize the members of the Albanian Cultural Garden Committee. Um, Anila and Ron Nicholas, Anila 
guys over there. Um, Hassan and Alban Bakia. There they are. Uh, Pete and Cleta Spiro Lari, and they just left. Um, Max Germana. And Ilias Veroni. So, anyway, um, we all know that Mother Teresa belongs to the whole world. So, from our hearts to yours, we thank you very much.